Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we're going to be talking with Zach White, who is the founder of Awaco, and we're going to be talking about the topic of how to avoid burnout and staying balanced. And there's a lot of things happening in life, and you can really get get uh, wore down. And Zach is an expert in this type area, and he's going to help us walk through. So, welcome, Zach. How are you doing today? Fantastic, Chris. It's awesome to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me, man. Absolutely. Been really looking forward to this to this topic and walking through this with you and uh, maybe get us started with some signs. You know, when people get stressed out, what are some of those signs that, that you see or you hear about that causes some burnout? Yeah, well, the signs are many, but I think, Chris, I, I like to think about this in two main categories. And and really it's around emotion and it's around energy. Okay, and engineers and technical professionals and really anybody I talk to, uh, when they come and they say, I'm stressed or I'm feeling burned out, when we assess, you know, what's going on in your life that triggered you to say that? What was it that caused it? It usually falls into one of these two categories. Either emotionally, I've caught myself in a pattern of, you know, really negative emotion or just feeling down, maybe depressed. Uh, but in a state emotionally that I'm just uncomfortable and I don't want to be, or, uh, it's around energy You know, I feel tired, you know, there's just a lack of ability to focus and to be present in the work or in my family or in the things that I want to be doing in my life. And, you know, these two areas are certainly linked, but I think those are the big buckets where you start to notice people feeling signs that are headed toward burnout is emotional state has shifted from where you where you normally operate into something that's really negative or you just catch yourself constantly low on energy okay now do you do you see is one more prevalent over the other or is it pretty balanced from that standpoint just curious on on what you see as the 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 leading one here yeah as far as leading Chris, I don't know that I can give you a, you know, hey, it's 70% here, 30% there. It, it really does vary. But one trend that I've noticed is, you know, high, high achieving people tend to ignore the energy category and they want to sort of muscle through. And a lot of times it's the emotional bucket that actually pushes them over the edge to take action, or it may even be because that emotional state is what makes other people in their life notice what's going on. And they get that external push from maybe a spouse or a coworker who begins to notice how you're showing up in the world just isn't the same. You're not the same you that you used to be. And so I I don't know that one or the other is is more dominant or which one always leads is necessarily a, a clear winner or a clear leader. But what I've noticed with a lot of people is we we tend to, you know, want to muscle up and plow through when it comes to feeling low energy for whatever reason. Maybe there's some ego there and maybe just that drive and desire to perform or to achieve and, and do great work. We'll ignore that that bucket, even though it's an earlier signal sometimes. I got you. So, you know, Sometimes just grabbing that extra Red Bull and trying to push through is not always, that could be the breaking point, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think we, to your point, sometimes we use, whether that's, you know, numbing behaviors or Band-Aids for something that, you know, you got a broken arm and you're trying to put a Band-Aid on it with coffee and Red Bull. Um, you know, that's that's definitely an early warning if you catch yourself going to those kind of outlets frequently, especially if it's not a pattern for you, not something that you're choosing because you enjoy it. If it's something you're, you know, choosing because you think you need it, definitely pay attention to that in the energy category, even if you're not aware of any shift emotionally yet. Right. 
I hear you. So are there any things that engineers typically see uh, or items that would cause this type of burnout? Yeah, you know, causes of burnout, a lot of times our bias is to immediately assume that it's things like long hours, you know, I've got a project that's really tough or something in the factory, you know, the line went down and we're in here, you know, working nights or working weekends. And, you know, this idea of working hard gets pointed to first by most people as a cause of burnout. And I don't want to say by any means that those are not real causes. If you're consistently working, you know, 60 or 70 hours a week, then that is a real challenge and something you need to be paying attention to and how to set better boundaries or maybe get out of that situation. But, but the reality, Chris, what I see is that those are actually minor in terms of contributors to burnout. You know, there's another dimension to this that really has nothing to do with how long or how hard we're working. And, you know, the, the causes of burnout are often, I'll call it cultural or unspoken and just related to your experience at work rather than the work itself. So let me maybe explain what I mean by that. You know, if I just define hard work as showing up, putting in hours and really getting after it, you know, the experience at work is, you know, are you feeling connected to the purpose and the people that you're working with? Or do you feel disconnected? And this has no real bearing or or meaning in my life. And I don't, I don't care about this work or I don't feel any meaningful relationship or connection to any of these people on the team. I feel alone in the work. There's no common purpose here. There's nothing that we're working towards. I'm not motivated or excited by the work, you know, or another one is maybe you work on a, a culture where nobody is willing or proactive to celebrate or acknowledge any of your wins. You know, it's been six months, 12 months, or, or years even since you've really felt acknowledged and appreciated for the incredible effort that you bring into the work. And over time, that takes a toll. You know, you just feel unappreciated in the work. And, you know, there's other categories, but these types of things, what I call the experience of your work, can often be more substantial drivers to being burned out because we we lose our desire to want to come in and give a great effort. And then we go into this hard work stretch. You know, we do have to put in 70 or 80 hours and we, we don't have anything in the tank to give because we've been in this environment, maybe toxic or maybe just apathetic for so long that we're disconnected and just not enjoying what we do. So, you know, when you talk about causes of burnout, I think, again, we look often at these, what maybe might be considered physical or external causes, but a lot of them, the real things that push us there is a slow overtime environment that we're in where the experience at work is one that we just do not enjoy. And it's, you know, I hear the phrase from people I work with a lot. It's, it's slowly sucking the life out of me. And then when you need to have some energy to bring to work, you don't have it. Right. That, that passion is gone, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I wonder too, is does like, you know, a lot of times regret, you know, did I make the right choice? You know, I don't feel connected to anyone, you know, in my, in my circle at work. And I'm sure all those emotions and thoughts come into people when they're, when they're getting hit with things like this. And, you know, when they get with to this point, Zach, are there some practical ways or tips that you, you know, with your experience recommend to, to get them pointed in a, in a better direction? I love that question. As an engineer too, you know, the, what's the practical, how do we get into action and do something that, that brings a result and not just talk about it. And, and I, I do have some things that I would definitely encourage listeners here to, to start with. Certainly, to not fall back into these patterns again is a, a much bigger conversation. And maybe we can touch on that later. But if you're feeling this way right now, 
if burnout is present with you, if that, you know, negative emotion or low energy is something that describes you, you right now, there's a couple places I would, would begin. The first is directly related to the word you just mentioned around regret, Chris. And it's this, we spend a lot of time and energy thinking about the past and the decisions that we made and questioning whether or not they were the right decisions. And I want to encourage you to stop that behavior. If you catch yourself in a pattern of constant wondering, did I make good decisions? Am I in the right company? Am I in the right career path? And and always just wondering and questioning, did I make good decisions? That is not a pattern that's going to take you forward. It doesn't mean we aren't going to make a new choice or new decision based on where we're at, but a constant ruminating about the past is something that's just going to get you caught in a pattern of thought that spirals worse into a a feeling of negative emotion and burnout. Because how will we ever know if a different decision from the past would have led us to a different outcome that's better? It's not important. What's important is the decisions that we're going to make today to make tomorrow better. So that'd be the first thing is let's stop living in the past and focus on the present and where we're going to take action for the future. The second piece then is this word that is often used, but I think it has a deeper meaning than we give it credit for. And it's recreation. And people say, well, what do you like to do for fun? What are your hobbies? What do you do for, for recreation? And when you really think about that word a bit closer I love that it's to recreate yourself. Recreation, it's recreation. You know, the idea of doing something that you love to recreate yourself. That's a whole different way to think about it than just to say, go, go you know, play some golf and have some fun, right, with, with the guys or go out with the ladies and do something that you haven't done in a while, all right? To recreate yourself and to take time, real time and energy, and to, you know, splurge a little bit, right? Have some fun. Like, do something a bit bolder, a bit different that you haven't done before, but for the purpose of recreation. And and I think, Chris, it's all about the intention behind it. You know, if you just say, well, I'm feeling a bit burned out, so I'm going to take Saturday off and go do something with my friends, you know, but all you do is show up. You go through the motions and that thing, and then you get back into the grind on, on Monday. You know, have you really recreated yourself? And so I would just challenge you to, to think, like, what can I do and how can I show up to that in a way that's going to really give life and help me to recreate? And just take an action. Do something that maybe you haven't done in a while and make it big enough and bold enough that it communicates to your subconscious mind, hey, you know, I need to get regrounded here. I need to recreate myself. Man, that and was... then the third is, the, oh, go ahead, man. Yeah. No, keep going. By all means, I was going to say those are two great points, but I'd love to hear your third. I got one more. Yeah. And, and this is about thinking about the future. And, and honestly, the most important thing, if I was going to give one tip about what action do I take to change the situation, it's going to be about boundaries. And boundaries in two ways, and it relates back to what we talked about earlier with the physical versus the experience. You know, if you need to set new boundaries around the hours that you're willing to work, have the courage to step up and ask for what you need. You know, a lot of times we just take what we're given in the workplace. And if you're headed toward, you know, a burnout that could have real impact on your health, on your family, on your life long term, You need to step up and have the courage and the boldness to ask for what you need. And, you know, I've yet to meet uh, an employer who intentionally wants to cause harm to people's lives and families and health, right? That's not the intent, but they've got goals and, and, you know, targets to hit and KPIs to manage. And a lot of times, you know, your life and and the humans in the company, sometimes we just forget to pay attention. So you got to be proactive to ask what you need in those boundaries, but also to set boundaries for yourself on the experience of work. And what do I mean by that? Well, okay, if if you're in an environment 
where there's no celebration, there's no acknowledgement of, of the work and the recognition. To set a boundary around that in your life might mean, I will not allow another week to go by without celebrating something with my peers at work. I'm going to lead that. I'm going to let that be a priority for me this week and, and create those shifts and changes for yourself. Don't rely on the organization to do everything for you. Right? And when we step into our own leadership in that way, that by itself can ignite a bit of fire in us to, to bring some of that passion back and get us going down the right path. So that would be my, my thoughts, Chris, as far as, you know, what do I do? What's the practical tips? And it's kind of a, a past, present, future, right? Stop thinking about decisions of the past and did I do the right thing? Just trust and have faith that your journey is the right one. You're right where you need to be. In the present, take some time and space, even money and energy of, of your life to invest in recreation. And then going forward, think about what boundaries you need to put in place that's going to be sustainable for you and get you into a situation that you're happy with and you believe is going to work, you know, for your life and the, the balance you're trying to reach. Man, that is awesome, Zach. That, that's in being intentional about all those things, you know, and recognizing when when you're looking back and, and having that foresight to, hey, I need to stop this right now. And I love how you say recreate and those boundaries, you know, they, they need to be had those conversations with, like you said, your employer, but your family, they, they should be a part of that conversation as well. Because, uh, you know, you could probably head off some some stress at, at the home if you know some expectations from the family, you know. And, and so really love how you tied all that together that way. And, and I know you also talk about a lot and uh, in, in things that you do about balance and staying balanced. And maybe could you clarify what you mean when you're when you're saying stay balanced in your career? Yeah, you know, balance, it's this interesting word and you know, balance is an, it's an active word. It's not, it's not that we can ever achieve balance and stay there. You know, you think about balancing on a, on a tight rope. If you were walking and you're in the circus and doing a, a tight rope walk, you know, the, the guy on that rope can never just find balance and stop. He, he's always in this constant active behavior of finding balance. You know, he, he goes a little to the left, he's balanced, but then he starts to lose it and he has to shift back to the right a little bit. And it's the same way in our life and in our career that there isn't going to be one perfect sweet spot that you can just hunker down in and, and be balanced for the rest of your life. It's not, it's not how it works. You know, your employer is going to ask for a long, hard work week from you when projects are on the line and it's going to throw you off with time with family. And, and you're going to go on vacation and do no work at all, you know, and you're going to have an amazing time, but you can't stay in Mexico for the rest of your life or you know, you're going to have a real problem on your hands, right? So the, the idea of balance is that we have to pay attention that there's more than one bucket and we're always in an active process of making sure that we are balanced. So, you know, I like to think of the buckets, Chris, and a few different categories. For one, it's yourself. And I like to think of yourself as, you know, a person who has a physical body, but you also have a mind and, and a spiritual life and just taking care of yourself in those regards. But then also you got relationships with your family as a priority and then relationships in your community, maybe in your church or in your workplace. You know, we have these different relationships we want to balance. And then you've got the work itself or your vocation. And then your finances, you know, I think it deserves its own category because it occupies such a huge percentage of our life is paying attention to, you know, what kind of finances we want to have and the money we earn and the money we give and what we do with that. So how do I find balance between all these? You know, and I need to exercise. Well, how much? And, and I want to take time for myself to learn and grow and, and nurture my mind. I want to be present for my family and take, you know, take care of raising my kids and being a great mom or dad. I want to be a great employee. I want to lead in this company. I want to get promoted and grow and I want to make great money or I want to, you know, reach financial freedom or whatever goals you may have in that space. This is a, a lot. I mean, I'm just, we're just getting started. I've already named a, a lot of things, right? So this question of balance, 
is that it's really easy to be successful in just one domain. If your only goal in life was to be in great physical shape and that's all that mattered, it'd be pretty easy for you to pull that off because if that's the only thing you had to do, you don't have to work out 12 hours a day to be in great physical shape. So I'm sure most of our listeners here could, <laughs> could really achieve that. That was the only thing. But the reality is it isn't the only thing. And so finding balance, it's all about bringing regular awareness to how am I doing in all of these areas. We have to get present with that question. Ask yourself, what's, what's missing? What's going well? Where do I need to take action to, to make a new deposit in a particular area? And I, I love the metaphor, just the idea of, you know, if there was an account, a bank account for each of these, we're always either making deposits or withdrawals. You know, so if I exercise every day for, uh, you know, an hour, I'm making a great deposit into my health. But then if I get really busy at work and I need to stop exercising and I, I don't hit the gym at all for a month, I'm making a big withdrawal. And so just asking yourself on a regular basis, what are the areas of my life that I want to pay attention to? And everybody, you know, has their own way they like to cut the cut the pie in their life. And I would just recommend you choose something that works for you. There's a lot of great tools out there. I have a framework I like to use. Stephen Covey's got a great framework in his book, The Seven Habits. You know, but Regardless, just identify what are those areas that you're trying to balance and, and what would you bucket those as? What are the accounts? And then have a rhythm of asking yourself the question, you know, how am I doing in my balance in each of these accounts? And are they not just their, their current magnitude, but the trend, the direction? Is that account, am I making withdrawals over the last week, month, quarter? Or have I been making deposits over the last you know, week, month, quarter? And, and by asking those questions, we can flag for ourselves before we hit these moments of burnout or moments of a relationship being in distress or financially really being in trouble to, to take action and move ourselves back to the left or back to the right to get into balance. No doubt. That's, that's great. I mean, I, I love how you, you know, you, you said the, the regular awareness, you, you need to have that check in for yourself. You know, I always think of it as a wheel, you know, and, all, and wheels turn fine until some, till something's missing and you have that flat spot. Right. And I mean, for me personally, you mentioned relationships and I call that, you know, someone I'll, I'll correlate that with social and that's a struggle point. So I have to, to, to be personally aware that that is a struggle point for me. Okay, I need to be intentional in that area. Some areas come natural to people, you know, physical or spiritual, whatever it may be, you know. But the ones that, uh, you know, the, the harder ones that that you need to focus on, that's where you got to have that intent and really sit down and, you know, whatever that cadence is. If if it's at the beginning of the year or the beginning of a month, but I love how you said that regular awareness and, and going back and, and doing that assessment. So. Uh, good stuff, man. Uh, great stuff. And I, I know you help a lot of people uh, in these situations where they have burnout. And do you have any cases you experienced where that situation, they were out of balance and after it was corrected, you know, what did they do? What, what were some of those shifts that you helped them with or that you recognized that, that got them on the right path? You know, if it's okay, Chris, maybe I'll share just a bit of my own story around this. Would that be all right? Absolutely. You know, in my life, uh, when I first started in my engineering career, I was a very stereotypical go-getter and poured all of my time and energy into the job. And, you know, I, I really believed that if I just continued to work harder and put more into this, that it was going to make everything else better. It's, it's funny how I look back now and think, wow, what, what was I thinking that somehow working more was going to make my marriage better or make my, you know, these other things better. But th those are the thoughts that uh, were in my mind. And it's something that a lot of people face is, you know, we're attracted to spend time and energy into the things that we're naturally good at or that we really desire. And I was in that place where, 
career and career success was not only a strength for me, but it's something I really wanted. And so I was drawn to it and I told myself a story that, hey, you know, yeah, my, my marriage is starting to suffer a little bit, but if I just keep working hard here and make a little more money, then that's going to create some freedom for us to be able to do some different things. And, you know, if I just kind of get this under control on this project, then it'll ease up on time for me to be more present with my wife, you know, next quarter. And I let that story and that approach carry me all the way, not just to, to burnout, but to a divorce. And I woke up one day, Chris, looking at the wall, asking myself, how did I get here? This is the last place in the world that I wanted to be. And not only is my career not where I thought it could be, but I'm emotionally and relationally or socially, to, to the word you used earlier, in a place that I am absolutely devastated by. And that was, that was my life at that moment. And really in that, that place of, you know, call it despair or even depression for a period of time, Chris, I awoke to the reality that I did not want to live that way, that one dimensionally ever again, that my whole life mattered and that balance between those things mattered. And it didn't mean don't go for career success. Please don't hear that. It wasn't that wanting a successful career was a bad thing, but my approach and the way that I invested my time and energy, which are just such precious resources in our lives. I mean, these are limited things, our time and energy and where we put them changes our results. And we only get one time through this journey. So we want to do it well. So you asked the question, you know, what, what happened? What did I shift? Well, kind of like we talked about earlier, you know, for one, I, I got help. All right. I, I didn't try to do this alone. You know, I had a, a counselor and a, and a coach and people that I partnered with to create shifts in my life, but I set new boundaries and I, I came at life with a new approach to say, I'm going to give a hundred percent to work when I'm at work, but then I'm going to get out of the office and put a hundred percent of my energy into these other buckets, into these other accounts when I'm with friends or when I'm with you know, my family and other people. And now I, you know, can say, honestly, after I made that change, my career actually exploded. I had five promotions in five years, saw my, my compensation increase by over six figures incremental during that time and experienced success in, in domains, every domain of life bigger than I'd ever had before. And it was just shocking to say, wow, when I actually come at this as a whole person and stop trying to leave, you know, one part of my life on the back burner while I figure out this other piece. And it's like you said, if this is a wheel, I love that metaphor, the wheel of life. I was trying to go a hundred miles an hour with a wheel that had multiple giant flat spots on it before Chris, right. And it was just absolutely wrecking my life. And when I came at that same goal of going a hundred miles an hour with a, a smooth wheel, a round wheel, it was an easy ride. And, you know, it took me to where I am today. So, you know, that's, that's my personal story. And then I've seen that with my, my clients and the people that I help now in this same space. And it, it really is powerful to round this thing out in terms of how we feel and experience and, and the real results that we drive into our life. Man, Zach, that was just amazing. Thank you for being, you, you were just real right there. You were honest, you were open, talking about the help you got, setting those new boundaries. It, that was impactful. So thank you for sharing that with our listeners. And, uh, you know, you're sharing your problem right now with a large community and, 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 and how you handled it. And you came out on the other end, man. So th this has been wonderful. And we, and we love to to kind of wrap up the, the Eco Ask Why uh, episodes with, with the why, you know, so in, if you were to had to, to wrap it up to why is it important to be self-aware about balance and, and to correct those areas in your career, what would, what would your answer be? I would summarize it with this statement, Chris, I think the quality of your life absolutely depends on the quality of your work life. 
And to think that you can have a situation where you're burned out or you're stressed out or you, you know, hate your work or it's a toxic environment or any of these things that may be causing you stress or burnout or negative performance in the workplace. If you think for a moment that that can be your reality five or six days a week and then get to the end of your days and say, man, it's been a great ride. I challenge you on that. You know, Zig Ziglar said a great life is the sum of many great days. So you can't go six for seven bad days and then hope that a, a fun day on Saturday on the, or Sunday on the weekend is going to make up for that is a, a path to success at the end. So, you know, why is it important? I think we want to have the highest quality of life we can, and you're not going to get there if the quality of your work life is, is not where you want it to be. Absolutely. Zach, this has been a wonderful conversation. I, I know our listeners out there, they're, they're stressed. I can't help but think after listening to this episode, uh, there's hope, man. And I just really appreciate how deep you went and real and honest. So thank you so much, Zach, for your time today. Hey, it's an absolute pleasure. I, I do hope, you know, people absolutely feel that hope that you just described, Chris. There is. And, uh, Let's take action and make life better tomorrow than it is today, brother. Absolutely, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. 